What will we find in today's Thursday thrillers here on the Mutual Audio Network? A few baffling mysteries? Perhaps a touch of murder? Let's find out. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 191, an end and a beginning. Agent Bonds for prisoners' transfers. Guards, take your positions. Portal is closed, clear, but door opening. This is outrageous. There wasn't nearly enough food for a journey of that length. They better feed us or I'm writing my congressman. Congressman? See, you are delirious from malnutrition. You don't even know what you're saying. Well, 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 look who we have here. So tell me, Mr. IDF agent, did you take your sonic screwdriver to shore leave? Louis, perhaps we need to take you to the infirmary and start a high-protein IV. You're not making any sense. Oh, I'm fine. Believe me. This is the guy I was telling you about. He bugged my pawn shop. He bought some hero props for me. He also promised to send me business from the conventions he was attending. Hello, (laughs) Louie. And yes, I used the Sonic at the latest shore leave convention. And I believe I sent a few customers your way. Yeah, after bugging my place. And I suppose it was you who put a tracker on our rental car. And I also wired Claire for your lunch meeting. We had four of our people in that restaurant, and two by the boat ramp. You played dirty. I respect that. Uh, Gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, these guards are going to be escorting you to your holding cells. What about food? You must make accommodations for us. We're Hongans. Hey, don't worry. You two aren't the first Hongans to be guests here. All right, gentlemen, take these two to their new living quarters. So, you're just going to lock us up and throw away the key? No, this isn't Honga. You actually get a fair trial. Hey, did you hear that, Hank? We're going to get a fair trial. Let us save you the trouble. Give us each a loaded pistol and a combat field, and we'll put on a show for you. Last man standing gets shot. Well, how about this? We'll set up a huge feast before you, invite several guests to come out and dine all night, and you two can sit and watch. And you call yourselves civilized. Get these two clowns out of here. Your planet's food stinks! Actually, I thought it was pretty good, except for the scrapple. Oh, shut up, Louie. (laughs) God, those two. Well, James, that puts your first case to bed. I wonder what's next. It's been a really long day, sir. I believe I'm suffering from a bit of stip lag. Yes, yes, I agree with you. It's one of the hardest things to get used to, Jameson. Normally the trip back here would have been in an evening by jet. You would lose us several hours. But you managed to sleep on the plane and it was manageable. Yes, sir. But when you step into a stip and a few seconds later you've lost all those hours, it plays with your internal clock, so to speak. Indeed. When the alarm sounded this morning, my body thought I was still in the middle of the night. Personally, I don't see an end to this. There are at least 20 people or more who were privy to this information. I'm sure that once we begin digging deeper, there'll be more. I think we may need some help. Yes, I agree. This leak source could also be external. Electronic surveillance? Oh, I seriously doubt that. MI6 is an intelligence gathering organisation. This whole complex is covered by surveillance listening devices and electronics designed 
to disable any listening devices. Then what else is there? Hmm. The easiest way to obtain information is from our embassies abroad. Yes, they are swept for listening devices, but look at some of the cases and where the spying was successful. I'm sure you're familiar with what is said about embassy spies by the University of Buckingham professor. Yeah, he said that every embassy in the world has spies. And for the most part, every host country knows who they are. It's better to know who these spies are in order to keep a track on them. You know the old saying, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. So when Agent Doug goes to the British Embassy in Kiev, that would be the first person or persons he would check. Exactly. What about the Russian embassy here? What about it? I'm sure we have an asset there. Maybe they know something. Hmm, that is somewhat of a stretch at this point. Relations are rather strained right now. We don't need to go and poke the bear. I suppose. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, sir. Go ahead and call it an evening. I'll see you back here bright and early. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. You too, Jameson. Mr. Pierman, good afternoon to you. And good evening to you, Agent Simon. I hope all is well across the pond. As well as can be expected, I suppose. What exactly can I help you with today? Now, Jameson and I have been tasked to do a thorough background check on several employees here at MI6. Really? Background checks? I thought anyone who worked for MI6 would go through the same screening as our intelligence people. They do, but sometimes people have a change of heart. Or perhaps there's an issue of blackmail. Yes, I suppose. What exactly do you need from me? Another set of eyes. We really can't trust anyone here for help. The director wants this low-key, no need to scare anyone off. Yes, I can see your point. Also, you probably want someone with IDF, just in case Rage has their hands in this. That was our thoughts too. Now the question is, do you have anyone in mind? Let me clear this with Director Holiday, but I'm thinking Agent Hawk. She's just been cleared for field duty, and personally, I don't want to send her into a situation where things might get rough. I think she needs more time to heal. I believe that's an excellent choice. She has the experience I'm looking for, and she could fit right in as a liaison from the American government. I'll talk to Holiday about it. Perhaps we can also come up with a good cover for her. Thank you. Will be awaiting word from you. Any idea where to start? I think there's a bar on about every corner. Mate, let's just stop here for a minute. Let's take a good look around at what's here. Imagine you're one of the boys. No crew, no ship, but you've got a handful of monetary units. Where do you go? All right, then let me think on that. Well, for one thing, we can rule out this one. Look at the clientele going in. They're much too clean and proper. Drinks there are probably twice as much as what our boys would want to pay. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. The one on the other corner, look at it. Flashing lights, someone out the front handing out coupons, I imagine. Well, if they're smart, they'll stay away from that one. It looks like a place that's ready to take your monetary units before you even get into the bar. Uh, let's keep moving. I see another one right up there. I was thinking, Skipper. If we don't find some of our boys, we're going to be up the creek without a paddle. What do you mean, exactly? We'll be in the same situation as Bella on Wi-Fi. Only two people to fly the camera. Gabby Jaffer and Nate will be on the Mercury. Tam and Barnes will be on Boulder Bar. That just leaves the two of us. Yeah, that's true. We need at least two of the old crew. The only alternative is to get her into space and have the BSS auto dock us. We could wait there to get enough of a crew to take her to Boulder Bar. Well, two would be great, but I'll settle for one. Have a go at that one. Very modest, not overly fancy. I think this one's a pretty good prospect. So, Marco, fancy a schooner? Well, I believe I can be persuaded. Okay, remember, we're not looking for any of our shipmates. We're looking for a captain in need of a crew. 
All right, but what happens if a captain wants to hire us? Or we get recognised? Well, Marco, we'll just have to get creative. Not a lot of people here. Well, it is still a bit early. Let's talk to the barkeep. He doesn't look too busy. Can I help you, gents? Yeah, we'd like a shot of something not too strong. We need to knock down some trail dust. Trail dust? What are you talking about, mister? This here is New Market. A civilised, modern town. Oh, sorry. He thinks he's still back on planet 310. 310, eh? They're a long ways from home. What brings you all the way out to Cali? Well, you probably heard the story before. You hop from one space freighter to the other and you end up, well, on Cali. Uh, speaking of freighter hopping, have there been any ship captains or crew looking for hires? Let me think. Now you mention it, there was a woman asking around. Sounded like she was looking for crew members that may have jumped ship. Did she have dark hair and maybe a long leather jacket? Possibly. But I wasn't paying much attention to her hair. Uh, really now? Yeah, really. I see a lot of people come and go through these doors. All right, let me ask you this. Did she look like someone you'd be afraid to take home to mum? Since you put it that way, she had black hair, dark eyes, a black jacket, and reminded me of a painted dart lizard. She was attractive, but if you got too close... If you got too close, she'd hit you with a poison dart. Yeah, that's her. She was in here just yesterday. She said her captain sent her to look for a few missing crew members. And you believed her? She set a bag of gold units on the bar and said these guys had jumped ship and there was a fat reward for them. Wait, are you guys looking for them just for the reward? No, 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 not at all. Those were crew members off me ship, the Canberra. The Canberra. That's the name of her ship. So whose ship is it? Mine, of course. Says you. How do I know it's not her ship? She has monetary units to back it up. Units that she stole from me quarters. She's a member of Rage and has the leader of Rage on board. Lord Lister is on that ship? No, Zoka. He's known as Wi-Fi. Now, just how do you know who Lister is? Look, if you want to keep your head on your shoulders, you learn who you can trust and who you can't. If this woman is part of Rage, I'm not going to make any waves. So I suggest you take your inquiries elsewhere. I don't want no trouble. Uh, can you at least tell us if she spoke to anyone else? I didn't notice. So if you would, just move along. Yeah, sure. He's lying through his teeth. And that's being generous. Well, there's a couple more ahead. I'll give Jeffra a call once we get across this street. Hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! <laughs> I always wanted to say that. I don't see the ship, do you? They could have landed anywhere. Maybe in a big field so they wouldn't draw any unwanted attention. That's true. Let's head into the hospital. Keep an eye out for the Canberra scout vehicles. Joe Mac for Jaffra. Go for Jaffra. Yeah, we found a barkeep who said he talked to Bella and that she was looking for missing crew members. She was offering monetary units for any information. Where did she get the monetary units? From me safe. When he learned that she was rage, he shut us down and ran us off. He said he didn't want any trouble. So, lesson learned. Don't mention rage next time. Are you still looking? Yeah, we're on our way to the next bar. Have to confess, though, this is the first time I've gone bar hopping. And I haven't had a drink yet. 
Well then, keep hopping and not drinking. I think you'll have better luck. Speaking of luck, you had any yet? Uh, we just arrived. There's no sign of the ship or the scout vehicles. We're going to go in and have a look around. We'll both stay in contact just in case either of us finds anything. Copy that. I know that's got to be killing Joe Mac. What, not finding any of his crew? <laughs> no, going to all those bars and not drinking. Here we are. Should we just go in? Let's take this head on. If she or both of them are in there, I have enough firepower to subdue them. Let's go. Place is a little dusty. I'm surprised the locals aren't using this more. I don't see any lights. We can use the dusty floor to our advantage. See the footprints? These were made by Dr. D and Nurse Ladner. Most of them lead down to that room on the right. If anyone's in there, they've heard us by now. This is the place. It's the only clean room we've seen. Now look around closely. I'm curious to see if there are any old bandages, swabs, or blood splatter. That will tell us if he had time to work on Wi-Fi. I'm not really seeing anything. In here. A very interesting. An operating room. State of the art. Is there a power switch anywhere? Hold on. I have a breaker box here. Let's see what we can get. Ah, that did the trick. Look at all of this equipment. Operating lights, monitors, a full array of surgical instruments. This looks pretty scary to me. But then again, I've been watching a lot of those Planet 310 horror movies. I half expect some guy to come busting in with a chainsaw. Let's hope not. Now, what do we have here? Oh man, that waste can does look like the chainsaw massacre happened here. You know, we interrupted whatever Doc was doing when we were here last. Absolutely, they did have to leave in a hurry, which begs the question, did he finish what he started? Well, it didn't take you long to get ready. When Director Holiday called me about helping out at MI6, well... Let's just say he didn't have to ask twice. Did he discuss with you how long you'd be attached? He provided me with a two-week visa. Excellent. He said if it required more time, he could get an extension for me. How did Kelly take the news? She was happy for me, but did admit that she was a little bit jealous. I'm not worried about her. She said that there's a lot of work to be done at the agency before Jim gets back, so she'll be plenty busy. Speaking of which, what's the latest on him? The last update that I had was that he will return to Boldabar and await your prisoners. I believe the IDF wants to give him the satisfaction of locking them up, especially Hank and Louie. That would be nice closure for him. I have notified London of your impending arrival. You'll be greeted by a Miss Pennypacker. She'll get you settled in. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Secured and ready for transport. Portal opening in three, two, one. Stand by for portal closure. Standing by. Cleared for egress. Miss Pennypacker, I presume? Yes, and welcome, Kate Hawk. And please, call me Penny. Thank you, Penny. Please follow me. I see you didn't bring a lot of luggage with you. To tell you the truth, with the per diem the IDF is paying me, I was hoping to supplement my wardrobe if necessary. I'm sure I can arrange some shopping time for you. Maybe I could go along and help you. That would be wonderful. I was in such a hurry, I forgot about your 220 outlets here. Oh, don't worry. I keep some small transformers here for such occasions. Here we are. Now, Kate, I need to get you registered here with a guest pass. Pim and forwarded all of your information to me. Could you just look it over? Sure. Let's see. Yeah? Yeah? Where did he get this weight? Let me see that. 
Oh, don't worry about that. We converted your weight to kilograms. I was about to say, I haven't weighed that little since grade school. Okay, Kate, if you could please stand right here and look right at the X on this card. Hold it. Okay, got it. I think that's a nice picture. I guess I can live with that. Just give me a few seconds here and you'll be all set. And here you go. Please display this badge at all times within this building. Thank you. Are there any areas I can't access? I'd hate to turn a corner and have security alarms go off. If you notice, your badge is trimmed in blue. If you would approach an area you're not sure of, there will be a color code on the wall. If you don't see blue, don't enter. That seems easy enough. Director, Agent Hawk is here and has been processed. Excellent. Right in there, my dear. Thank you, Penny. Agent Hawk, please come in. I'm delighted to meet you. I'm Director Cage. Yes, Simon's boss. I'm so glad to meet you. Confidentially, I think the boss part is a formality. But Simon has been here longer than anyone. Sometimes I feel that I'm just making suggestions. So, what has Pierman told you so far? Only that Agent Simon is working a case with Jameson and that I may be of some help. I was with Tony when you called. Uh, yes, we're in a bit of a rush. Uh, he can fill you in on the details, but basically we need another set of skilled hands and eyes for a delicate matter here at MI6. I see. And since you're not using in-house agents, there must be some sort of internal problem. You see, that's why we asked for you. Yes, we suspect a leak somewhere or some sort of surveillance we can't pick up. Now, Pennypacker has made accommodation arrangements for you, or you'll need to adjust to our time change, so grab your things and we'll get you settled in. We'll start fresh tomorrow morning. I'll have a car come around to pick you up at 7. Thank you, sir. I'm really looking forward to this. Hey, Jim. Hey, Captain Fielder. How goes the refitting of the Ulysses? There was a delay in getting some of the parts, but things are moving along. What's going on with the Mercury? I saw it leave out of here in a hurry. Oh, they know that both of us elected to remain back. They had a spotting of the camber on Cali, so they departed immediately. Really? Where was it? Somewhere in New Market. They were given direct clearance to the portal, so they saved time by not stopping by the BSS. I guess the Federation really wants to get their hands on Wi-Fi and Bella. <laughs> yeah, the controller issued a warrant for Bella, so there are two more bounties out there. Well, I hate to miss out on those, but my ship has top priority. Well, at least for me. Even if they had my parts, I still would have had to wait on the Mercury to get resupplied. Everyone in the shipyard jumped on that job. I definitely had top priority. But they've cleared out, so they can jump right into your work order. I've been wondering, what do you really think happened to Wi-Fi? I'm not sure what you mean. Dr. D was going to implant new circuits into his brain, but we were able to stop him before he completed it. How can you be certain? Well, because Wi-Fi and I have tangled before. These bio-implants have their own unique signal. I learned to identify his while we were there, and I didn't pick up any signal. So maybe the doctor was able to either remove his or disable it? Whatever the case, with the doctor in prison, I don't see much hope for Wi-Fi, which begs another question. Okay, this should be interesting. What's the question? If he didn't complete the job, why did Bella risk so much to save him? Why did she hijack the Canabera and take him with her? He's probably in a vegetated state, or, or even dead. What is she going to do with a dead Lord Zokar? That is a very interesting question, Captain Tam. Let's look at it logically. Scenario one, the biometrics have been removed and she's not conscious. Number two, he's in a vegetative state. And three, he's dead. What good is he to her? He's Wi-Fi, Lord Zokar, ruler of rage. Well, what good is he to rage? In fact, what good is he to anybody? Edith Wilson. Edith Wilson? Who's Edith Wilson, and what does she have to do with Wi-Fi and Bella? American history, James. Think. 
I know you weren't there in spite of what Gabby has said about your age, but go back to 1919. Oh, First Lady Edith Wilson. That's right. October 2nd, 1919, President Woodrow Wilson suffered a bad stroke. Everyone kept it quiet, and Edith actually ran the country for several weeks, and no one was the wiser. Yeah, I see what you're getting at. Bella could use Wi-Fi as past power as a leader of rage and make everyone think he escaped from that uh, lunar prison colony. There are witnesses there who saw him escape on the camera. And if he is alive, she could still use images of him and even his fingerprints to make people think he was still in charge. Now why she would want to do that is beyond me. Well, because she's a power-hungry, low life. I think I got the picture. She's bad all around. Eh, you just might be onto something. This concludes the inventory checklist. All items have been verified. All right, that's done. And I physically verified that everything was loaded. Now what? I do not have any further instruction. I'm afraid I do not have an answer for you. Well, what good are you then? I have many beneficial functions. Would you like to re-verify the inventory? No thanks, once was enough for me. Here's a question for you. When Nate reprogrammed your voice from male to female, did he make any other changes? Scanning my files, both active and deleted, I do not see any software changes. What would I be searching? I don't know. Maybe female intuition? That is a human trait that I am not capable of. Yeah, you're lucky. Hey, how about some music? Playing music from Music Library. No, no country. I want to rock, baby. You know what? Forget it. I'll just be bored. As you wish. Gabby, we have a situation. Start up the Mercury for flight. We're on our way. Why is Jaffra calling for a startup so suddenly? Have Jim and Tam discovered Bella's plot? How will Kate assimilate into MI6? Will Joe Mac and Marco find crew members in Newmarket, or has Jaffa ended the search? Find out the answers to these questions and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles Run, Bella, Run.